No, the title is not clickbait. You can have this table delivered and assembled for significantly less than material costs even. And since this is the land of the free, it'll be yours and you can keep it or flip it and make yourself an easy grand or two. All it takes is just a specific comment. And if this goes off well, I'd like to do something like this once or twice a month and get it down to you not even paying for a slice of the material costs and just get you some free stuff. What you saw there was my stockpile of walnut slabs from a tree that I had milled up from my childhood home that's been drying for a few years now. One thing you should be thankful for when buying a slab versus dealing with your own milled up one is the bark cleanup. This was a much longer and messier task than I thought it would be. Once I had removed the bulk of it, I switched to a wire brush to get all those loose fibers cleared away, and then hit it with a modified toilet brush to get all the dust out of any little cavities on the edges. I took a page out of the Blacktail Studio book and found a local shop with a monster drum sander to help me with the flattening. Jeremy and Steve from Dynas Custom Door made quick work of this slab and saved me hours in building and using a router sled. I really wanted to use this machine myself, but still cool to watch from the sidelines. Back home, I can make the form for the epoxy pour with some melamine that I had on hand. Speaking of that being on hand, I'm going to calculate for you the material cost for this build at the end, and I'm not going to add the melamine, as I already had it, or the walnut itself, as I already had that. Are you starting to see what I mean now by significantly less than material costs? The form I'll put together with pocket holes and caulk the seams. In nearly all epoxy projects I've done, I've made them slightly oversized so I can trim to final size after everything is cured. So the rougher edge you get where the epoxy meets the caulk won't matter ultimately, but I give it a quick finger wipe anyway. I'll take my time and calculate the amount of epoxy needed to fill the form, which came out to about 4.5 gallons. The split walnut goes in temporarily and I'll add some volume decreasing blocks to the corners because the final shape will be an ellipse so that would all be wasted space anyway. Woodworking can be an expensive hobby so I found that most woodworkers are cheap asses at heart and I'm no exception so I didn't mind spending time doing this even to save a few drops of epoxy. To put this reasoning in context, crude oil is currently $78 a barrel. A barrel is made up of 42 gallons, so oil is $1.85 a gallon. The total boat epoxy that I'll be using runs about $116 per gallon. That means that epoxy is 62 times more expensive than oil, so treat it like liquid four-leaf clovers. I'll take a cheap brush and paint epoxy onto all the exposed edges. I'll give the top a coat of shellac to prevent the forthcoming black epoxy from staining it and immediately flip it over to do the underside as the more time spent with finish on only one side of the piece means higher chance for wood movement. I noticed some drips of cured epoxy from when I sealed the edges and I spent some time knocking those down first as they would prevent the slab from sitting flat on the form which means more epoxy running under it and not where it's supposed to go. Remember, cheap ass. I had to wait a few days for the epoxy to arrive, so in the meantime, I'll get my leg blank started using some red oak. I had this bit and picked up another six board feet of six quarter, which should be enough to glue together to make two and a half inch square stock. I want to try my hand at a trapezoid for these, and I'll often consult an online shape calculator when making shapes that aren't kindergarten <laughs> level. I know a couple of the variables like total height and length of the wider side but putting those calculations in tends to spit out angles with four or five decimal places. I'll make my life a little easier and tell the calculator an integer for the angle rather than for the side length and let it work backwards. And that's the extent of the math I'll dump on you here. Thank God epoxy is here, so pencils down. When you're pouring epoxy, it's best to do so in a temperature controlled environment. Total boat wants between 60 and 80 degrees, so take that as room temperature is ideal. My shop is still getting down around freezing at night, so I commandeer the basement for a few days when I make a pour. Because of the natural split in this piece, I'm going to clamp it down in a few places to prevent the legs from doing this or this. Now I don't usually talk about subscribing, but I think there's real value in doing so here because, like I said, I want to do this type of thing a lot and I want to get it to where I can make it absolutely free to do so. 
So if you feel like gaining the opportunity to get free multi-thousand dollar things, probably want to consider it, that's all. I think everyone can agree that besides the shot of the first coat of finish going on some figured wood, epoxy pouring has got to take second place for the most satisfying scenes in a build. I'll again take some advice from the Grandmaster Sage of Epoxy and use a brush to clear the bubbles away from the side of the wood. Once I'm mostly confident with the bubble situation, it can sit undisturbed for a few days while I get back on the legs. Fast forward three days and I'll demold and get ready to draw my ellipse. If you want to know how I got this shape, let me know and I'll make a short about how to get this done. The big challenge next is how to cut this out. The jigsaw is your most straightforward solution, but you can get massive blade wander if you aren't careful. I landed on using the bandsaw, but with some material support help. This was outrageously stressful, and if you want to cut an ellipse for yourself, take this one piece of advice. Just make your coffee table a rectangle like a normal person. The edges get cleaned up with the random orbital sander, and I took it back over to the daddy drum sander to get it to final size and I'll get the top sanded to 80 grit before addressing this crack. Now, is the epoxy enough to keep it from splitting further? Probably, maybe, no way, I don't know, but I'm gonna throw in a very unique bow tie. The second part will make the most precise fit of any bow tie ever created. Sounds like big talk, but you'll see what I mean in a second. First thing is a simple bow tie from an offcut. Nothing outrageous there. Then I'll cut a second bow tie within the border of the first. Here comes the magic. To get the inner bow tie to fit absolutely perfectly, I'll just make it out of a mystical property changing liquid that has the ability to completely occupy the shape of the container it's in. Cheeky shit over, I'll sand all the way through the grits, putting an edge profile on after 120 and finishing at 220. Starting on the bottom, I'll buff on one coat of Osmo and then flip it over to do the top. I'm going to buff pretty aggressively with the non-scratching white pad and then really make sure that I've got it all removed after a couple minutes. Once that fully sets up, I'll lightly sand with 600 grit just to knock down the nibs and wipe it nice and clean for the second coat. Back to the legs, I won't math you anymore unless just pick up that they're assembled and I'm going to dye them black. Emphasis on the word dye, as it causes me slight stomach discomfort saying the word stain. I'll give the legs the same Osmo treatment as the top, mark where those mounting holes land on the underside of the table, and install some threaded inserts. Well, not this one, I broke it. So I widen the hole, use some wax to ensure my success, and that's how it's supposed to go. As I assemble this, I'll tell you the specifics of this deal. Starting it off with labor, we're going with zero dollars. The walnut, zero dollars. Melamine, zero dollars. Threaded inserts, four dollars. Machine screws came in a pack of 25, and I used four of them, so 96 cents. The epoxy I got a Workbench Con discount of 20% on, so it totaled 445 dollars. The oak for the legs was 45 dollars, but I didn't use it all, so let's call it $25. The Osmo, shellac, glue, and dye, let's conveniently go with four cents. And give me 50 bucks for gas, which is less than it would cost to ship this thing, and we arrive at a grand total of $525. Now if you say something in the comments, but start it with your state, I'll assume you're good for the $525, and I'll pick a winner next week. I'm really looking forward to meeting one of you in person and starting to make this give it away now thing a habit with even bigger and even freer stuff. Thanks for watching.